promised them a redeemer. That's love. Agape is the kind of love that God showed Noah and his family when he saved them from the flood. Agape is the kind of love that God had for those grumbling Israelites, giving them escape from Pharaoh and Egypt. And even though they continued to grumble and complain, and even worship other gods, God brought them and their children to the promised land. Agape is the kind of love that made the adulterer David king. Agape is the kind of love that sent the prophets out to preach repentance. And most of all, the greatest kind of agape was shown when God sent his only begotten son to save us. And in Christ becoming flesh, God was sending his son not to friends, but to enemies, offering them not hatred and judgment, but offering them mercy and grace. God's agape will go the extra mile and provide a way to the finishing line. As I said to the children, love is a choice, and God chooses to love us even when we are unlovable. And why do we do it? Well, there's this another story about an old pilgrim who was hiking his way in the Himalaya mountains, and it was a bitter, cold winter. He stopped at an inn, and the innkeeper said, how are you ever going to get up to the top of the mountains in this kind of weather, good friend? And the old man said cheerfully, well, my heart is up on top of that mountain, so it's very easy for my body to follow. <coughs> That's the kind of love that Jesus had when he showed his love for us, even for the cross, long before uh, Pilate set it up. God's love doesn't compromise. Jesus said, think not that I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Truly I say unto you, until heaven and earth passes away, not an iota, not a dot will pass away from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever relaxes one of the least of my commandments and teaches others to relax them shall be called least in the kingdom of God. But he who does my commandments and teaches others to do my commandments shall be great in the kingdom of God. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you'll never enter the kingdom of God. And those people that were before Jesus listening were astonished. They said, how can our righteousness exceed the scribes and the Pharisees? And then Jesus applies love to conflict and fighting and lust and divorce. These attitudes compromise love. Jesus said, whoever relaxes one of the least of my commandments and teaches other people to relax them shall be called least in the kingdom of God. And let's admit it, we are living in a time when people all the time compromise uh, God's law. law. Everybody go, goes their own way and we make up our own rules and they change all the time. We live in an age when we think we're our own authority. And God has to accept us on our own terms. People will actually say, I am the final authority as to what's right and what's wrong. Don't impose your values on me. God will understand. And you know, even some Christians think this is okay. Even some denominations. Our own denomination is fighting. We're having a struggle as to, to whether um, homosexuality is acceptable. We'll be voting on it, and who knows what's going to come out of that. Uh, the scriptures say, no, it's not acceptable love. But we're saying, we don't care, God, we'll do what we, is right in our own eyes. Listen to Jesus. Therefore, anyone who sets aside the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Notice that Jesus doesn't say believes, he also says practices. As we have here before us, God gave us ten commandments to be the moral standards. And they were the foundation of the Old Testament. They can't be changed to fit today's morality. But Jesus even goes further, said than the letter of the law, and that's what they were focusing on, the letter, looking for all kinds of uh, loopholes. In fact, the scribes and the Pharisees, thats they were kind of lawyers trying to define how we can get around this commandment and how we can get around that commandment. And Jesus stopped them in the tracks and said, it's not the, just the letter of the law, 
we have to keep the spirit of the law as well. You know, some people believe in an a la carte Christianity. You know, you go to a restaurant, and if you order a la carte, it means you can pick and choose what you want to, to eat off the menu. And some people think that the commandments are pick and choose a la carte. Thing too. Well, I like commandments 1, 3, and 5, but I don't like uh, 6, 7, and 8. It might have been important for, for uh, illustration, might have been important for mom and dad to keep the Sabbath day holy, but for us today, not so much. God will excuse my cursing and taking his name in vain because it's just a bad habit and I'm only human. God will excuse my immorality because everyone else is doing it. If God knew what kind of parents I had, he would know why I don't honor them. So we pick and we choose and we change the commandments uh, to fit uh, what we want. And yet Jesus said, whoever sets aside one of these commandments. And do you know that word set aside is the word relaxate. And from that word, we get our English word laxative. And you know, laxative is when you loosen something up and get rid of it. That's what people do with God's uh, commands. But Jesus said, agape says no to that. Jesus taught us in the Beatitudes, here's how you're going to find happiness. And then he said, you are the salt of the earth. And salt's a moral preservative. He says, you're the salt of the earth, meaning you're to go out and to change society, not let society uh, change you. Jesus said, you're the light of the world, a light not to put hide under a bushel, but to shine for all to see. Jesus was teaching about personal morality. He said, just as Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, he brings us a new law. Actually, it's not a new law. He fulfills the old and brings us the new. It goes beyond the letter to the spirit. Thus, not to murder anyone's not enough. In our relationships, we're to seek peace and resolve conflict. Adultery, not to commit adultery isn't enough. We're to live uh, in personal holiness. And then Jesus teaches about uh, divorce. And we know divorce is love turned into destructive rage and it was very very easy in that day for uh, a man not only to divorce his wife but but uh, actually put her in great danger do you know that a, a, a jewish man if his wife burned to dinner he could take her and throw her out of the house it's a good thing it doesn't go the opposite way or Lauren would have put me out a long time ago <laughs> in the prophet ezra's time Israeli men divorced their wives because it became popular to have foreign wives and they didn't want to have two so they threw the Jewish women out of their house and in that day there was only one occupation that they, they could go into. Israeli men threw their women out of the house when they lost their beauty or didn't agree with them. Now if God was as lenient with divorce as we are, he would have put us out a long time ago. Jesus said, even when divorce is necessary, be reconciled to your former spouse. So this is the whole purpose of the Sermon on the Mount. And that's why you don't hear too many sermons. It's painful and controversial today. Jesus says, be reconciled with God. Be reconciled with each other. Don't continue to hate. Jesus is God made flesh. Come to heal enmities, to make us friends with God and each other. But we know that love takes a lot of energy. Love takes a lot of forgiveness. And oftentimes we relax our standards and settle for inferior kinds of love. That's why Jesus said, do not relax. Do not set aside my commands. Whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So in God's kingdom, it's not enough not just to murder with knives. But it's also not... Uh, we're not to murder people with words. It's not enough not just to commit adultery. or to have, It's not even enough to have adultery in our eyes. But we're to forgive as God has forgiven us. And we end with uh, not only thinking about the words, but to, to hear Jesus said, don't just swear oaths. Don't just promise before God. Don't take God's name in vain. Just do it. Let your yes be yes, let your no be no. This is agape. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we give you thanks 
for your great love, which is so superior to any kind of love that we have. And we know we are so eager and anxious at times to relax your love. But we just pray, Lord, that we may keep the spirit as well as the letter of your law. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing hymn number 55, Day by Day.